three, we are live. What's up, James? How's it going, man? Hello. Hey, not bad. How's Finally. <laughs> yeah, it was it was hard to set this up. I, I still have yeah, it's been a... yeah, I still have issues with the with the setup. How's it going, guys? I don't know if they hear us. Um, hopefully, yeah. So hopefully they hear us. Let me actually open a page while we are here, just to be able to see what people say on YouTube. How's it going, guys? Do you guys have any questions for James to start with? Or do you have anything that you want to start with, James? Like since last time, since we spoke? Yeah, just just feel free to ask me anything. I'm uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get my YouTube up. It was giving me a load of feedback because I was listening to myself twice. That's fine. There we go. It was a bit difficult this time, but, um, but we will set it up in a better way next time so we don't have to. Uh, Stephen deal. Scott, there he is. How's it going, guys? Hey, what's up? Everyone. Hi, everyone. Yeah. There is like eight people watching. Cool. Eight people watching. Just eight. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Um, do you guys have any so questions what? for James to start or no? We should just talk about whatever we want. Uh, I wouldn't have any questions for me either. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't think that's true, man. <laughs> no, that is wrong. That's not the case. We actually had a live last night with um, with Mike as well. I don't know if you saw that one. I, I do it um, often these days to just do a stuff with people and show um, like, I don't know, like I was doing a lower risk character for for my personal project. I don't know if you saw that one. No, you, no, you I've not seen it yet. No, you haven't <laughs> seen it. What are you doing? Some like game rest stuff? Yeah, let me actually. Yeah. Maybe I can call you on Facebook to share my screen on Facebook so so you can see it on on the screen. Yeah, if I, I can't share see something it on YouTube at the minute. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Let me let me actually call you on Facebook. Hold on a second. Okay, cool. But no camera. Oh, what? It doesn't let me. No camera or sound. It's, okay, so I'm gonna turn up this. Does it let me to share a screen? Oh, it says screen sharing is only available for video calls. Okay, it doesn't let me. Do you have a Skype? Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's try Skype. Sorry, guys. Let's. We're yep, trying sorry, to. Everyone. Yeah, doing this. So, what is your Skype? Do I have you? James Bosby chatted over a year ago. We didn't chat on a Skype. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever used Skype for anything. Yeah, <laughs> I have got it. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to turn off the webcam. Did you get my call on Skype? Uh, no. Oh, Skype is messing everything up. Actually, let's cancel it. I don't hear you well anymore. What? I lost your voice completely. Do you guys hear James? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think Skype messed everything up. Wait a second. Uh, do you want to join Hangout again? Join Hangout again? Yeah. I think because of... One second. Sorry, guys. Hold on a second. There is a technical issue that we are dealing with. Oh what your your voice is so low it's actually bad. Oh, what? It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> Did I call you on a Skype or not? You're on a Skype as well. No, I'm not on Skype. No. I'm on Zoom or hang out. What? This is a strange. Let me actually increase the volume. Do you guys hear James well, or is it too too hard to hear him? I'm asking them if they hear you well. One, two, three. Can you say something, James? That's weird. the The voice is so low. Did did it did anything change on your end? No, 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 I didn't do anything. Okay, let me actually close Hangout. I'm gonna open it again. 
Sorry, guys, give me a second. You know what? Actually, let's try this. Uh, do you want to turn on your voice on, um, on Zoom? Let's see if it, it's going to fix it or not. Okay. That's yes, it's fixed. I think that was the Hangout error. That better? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, finally. Okay. All right, let me actually get your screen on Hangout. Okay, if you want to join Hangout so I can share your screen. Oh, I can hear your voice twice. Oh, okay. On, on my own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, now it's better. Oh, yeah, that's it. Okay, technical difficulties. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. So I need to share my screen again on yeah. Hangouts. That would be perfect. There we go. That's done there. All right. Maybe what do you guys want to hear James talking about? Like he's a special guest. We'll do this more often. And um, I don't know if you guys have any questions about the scans or anything about, um, you know, whatever you guys want. I mean, I guess we could. Um, we could just talk about sort of... everything until people just open up and ask questions. Yeah. I right. mean, I guess. Um... Uh, it says no, they can't really hear me. Uh, they will be, they, they will hear. Yeah, there's a delay. Yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we could sort of continue where we sort of left off last time when we were kind of uh, talking about the, um, I don't know, how the sort of, uh, you know, current crop of um, sort of marketplaces and that are yeah, you know, undervaluing can... the, the, the work of artists. I was actually talking um, to a good artist yesterday um, and he was, um, we actually opened up about the same conversation, like about um, artists not charging enough money or, you know, uh, not doing enough, enough, not not basically selling their own work for a better price. You know, and, and we had a very interesting conversation. I'm going to release it next Tuesday. It's one of my podcasts. And um, cool. maybe I can share here what, what this guy is. Uh, I'll send it to you. I don't know if they, they know it. Edon Grazio, do you know him? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's he's amazing. He's he's so good. Like his work is amazing. He, he has a very he has a very interesting personality. It was a very interesting conversation because um, if you go to his website, um, do you want to go to his website if, on your end? Yeah, um, you can see the prices. So somebody's just uh, asking. Uh... Michelangelo, uh, Z rap or rap? Um, nearly always. Uh, just answer your question. Sorry. Um, That's nearly good. always use rap. Uh, Z rap's all right, but um, it's kind of limited, and it's um, you know what you can do with it. Rap's a lot more powerful with the, um, the sort of node-based um, sort of system that it's got for um, you know transferring details and transferring parts of the mesh as well. Um, it's quite cool for actually like taking um, like a, a you can use the replace node to actually take like a you know part of somebody's face and map it onto you know like a completely different face but still keep the proportions. It's quite a cool. Um, I don't know if I could actually show you that if anyone's interested. Yeah, that would be great actually. I yeah. think this is a good conversation opener. Yeah, I mean it's a really powerful, um, really really powerful bit of software. I mean it's it's pretty much revolutionized the whole kind of scanning industry in a sense that it allows you to really, really quickly go from a raw scan to a retopologized mesh. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just show you this then quickly with the quick OBJ. Uh, I wanted to have Mihai as well, but I, I don't, I don't think he knew that we are doing it now. He's not. Yeah. There we go. So we got one face here um, and then we can grab another completely different face. Let's have a look. So this one. Then. So there you go, got two very, very different faces. The same topology, the right? There. Same topology, yeah. So everything we do is exactly the same topology, um, but a really cool little way of uh, you know, like making new characters is you can use this um, geometry replace tool. Do you like Zero App because it's a standalone software, like standalone uh, application? Yeah, it's just more powerful. Like the, the oh, ZBrush is it for ZBrush hasn't got half the tools oh. this has got in it. Uh, mm. You know, this has got so many more nodes. 
So RAP 3D yeah. is more more uh, basically easier and better to use, more more practical. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, f I find it more practical because I don't like to do everything inside ZBrush because it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit crashy. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like this. I think they they fixed it in the last version of 2020. I actually use that now, and I don't have any problems anymore. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, got, I've just got 2020. Actually, I've just upgraded to it. Mm -hmm. And they're it's coming out with 2021 now. Yeah, I know it looks awesome. The uh, the dynamic clothing brush. Yeah, it's amazing. I don't know if it's. I, just, I don't know. We'll see. Like, I'm kind of not sure if. Well, obviously, it cannot kill marvelous, right? You know what I mean? No, no. It's way. probably good I mean, for like. Looks... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was talking about Sophie again. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's good. It's good. It's it's. So I think sometimes <laughs> there is a delay. Like I hear you late, and I I say something, and then we 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 say the same thing together. So no, it's okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, well, I can't even remember. What I was going to say, I think the um, sorry. So this is uh, <laughs> to show you what this does. So like that's your original mesh. That's your uh, mesh that you're wrapping, and then using this polygon selection, you can replace the face completely so you can get this kind of like these sort of weird kind of hybrid <laughs> creatures if you know what i mean and you've got all sorts of different um like fitting options oh so you can adjust the the face shape with nodes yeah mm -hmm. that's interesting yeah, so you can actually adjust yeah it's quite cool so you can map one face onto another that is interesting it's quite cool so that's putting the young girl's face on the older woman's face but if we swap over the uh, Polygon selection and swap the nodes. You can do it the other way around. Mm. So you can put the old woman's face onto the young girl's head, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and you know, actually, all their studios are almost like using a scan data these days. So, wow, yeah, that's it's, interesting. I mean, it's really cool, and you can basically make you can make up characters with it. You know, you can. Because you can do that on any part, so you can replace ears, you could replace mm -hmm. eyes, you could replace, and it's all based on this selection. So if I was to only select, say, her nose, mm -hmm. let's try that. Watch this. I'm only doing it roughly. Um, let me go to the viewport, see so we can replace her nose with that nose. Hmm, that's interesting. It's quite cool. Yeah. Because you can do that on any part. So it's kind so of like a, a character generator in a way. Mm -hmm. that's very cool i mean zero is i think it's good for for me as an artist because um when i um make heads and stuff it's probably easier to use zero because it's inside zbrush i actually don't even use yeah. zero I, I tried it a few times and i'm still matching things to all the all the school like projecting and you know if i do that but these kind of tasks are actually outsourced these days, I guess. Some studios keep it in-house, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, um, it's a chore, basically. It's not, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not yeah, fun. That's the problem with it. It's kind, of, it's kind of enjoyable when you've got a lot of them to do and you sort of can, like, yeah. if you're using the same topology, it becomes quite interesting. Yeah. Which program is it? About 3D. Sorry, I'm just reading the comments. Mm, they're talking about photogrammetry. Yeah. So I do you think the first release? Do you think uh if people want to do photogrammetry because I tried once with one DSLR camera without anything I got some nice results just for the face just taking yeah. photos um do you think it's I mean yeah. I don't know I mean, do you I have any tips for that like how how we, how people can yeah. do something like that I was that? talking about this earlier with somebody um like uh, so we've obviously got this massive rig with 180 cameras on it and you know it's all wired up and yeah. you know, networked and all that stuff. Um, but I mean, it, it's all down to the actual artists themselves. I mean, I think um, you could probably get the same results with a single camera mm -hmm. and a lot of sort of sculpting knowledge and anatomy knowledge. And, you know, if, if you had a good understanding of ZBrush and texture painting, I, I, I honestly think you could do, you could get exactly the same quality just with a single camera shooting mm -hmm. a face than you, as you could with, you know, 180 cameras. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually something I quite like to do a tutorial on at some point is how to make a you know like a photorealistic character using a, an iPhone. Yeah, because it's just it's, with an iPhone without anything else. Yeah. Do you use yeah, um, Agisoft for it or what? What uh, scanning software do you use for that? 
Uh, we use uh, Reality Capture, but we do use Agisoft for for some stuff. It's quite good for doing facts, you know, like uh -huh. expressions and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's you know it's really handy for that kind of thing because um, it's a lot, it's not faster, it's slower, but it it can batch process a lot better than Reality Capture, which is a bit limited in that, mm -hmm. that respect. So it's yeah. not um, like the the other one is like what was it, the name? Uh, reality Capture reality capture or capturing reality oh, i don't know it's got about three names 2007 uh wow it says yeah reality capture yeah it's oh, got quite is... a weird licensing system it's kind of you sort of you can build your scan and look at it but you can't export it and oh that's interesting it. yeah so it's quite cool for you know experimenting and trying is it expensive it. it's about uh it's about fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand pounds, pounds, pounds for a four thousand euros i think for, for a, one license for one locked license wow. for a machine yeah that's insane uh, but you can pay you can get it for free and then you can just pay per model that you export mm -hmm. so you can download it free but if you want it on a machine yeah. you know to export as many as you want it's about 15 grand i think you know actually um maybe i can share my screen with you as well so you can see what i'm trying to do now yeah i was like <laughs> working on i'll do it on on hangout um I'm hanging out. yeah that's fine share screen where is it i think it's this one do you see it i think uh, it looks like looks like we can share a screen at the same time <laughs> yeah i can see I can okay see that's, my screen on your screen that's good that's good so <laughs> cool this is what i'm trying to do now right um let me see if this is showing it do you guys see it <clears throat> Um, so I think I could even use a scan base for this. Yeah, definitely. You know, just to, one of yeah. the things I actually realized is using a scan is actually helpful. If I, if I even want to make a creature, I can just use a scan base and transfer the textures, you know, yeah. um, to this one and even the UVs. Um, so exactly. Yeah. If you've got a good scan base with a good set of, uh, with good topology and good UVs and you can just essentially sculpt on it. Yeah. Um, or use it as your topology and then just you've already got the textures and everything already there yeah one of the things i realized like um people don't talk about it is like um using um a scan textures for for the base like if you want to texture a character um it's actually it's actually easier than painting the texture or projecting the texture so for example like oh, i could yeah. i could grab one of the one of the header scans that you have let me actually see if i can share something here like one of these, right? I could say, let's say, which one is the best quality you think? Uh, or a base texture? Head scans are probably, yeah, they're probably the best ones at the minute. This one? Yeah, any of those. There's, oh, there's a few in there now. The, so yeah, I mean, like, pretty good. like if I want to make a um, um, black guy, I can just take this, right? And then use yeah. this. At, and uh, these are with... Um, Geometry or like wireframe or is it like uh, just yeah. a scan? So that the, no no the, these all use the same mesh. Oh, so you clean up everything now. You don't you don't They're sell all, the... if you yeah if you scroll down no these aren't raw scans. No, no we don't really sell raw scans anymore because they're just oh. kind of a waste of time. Yes, this is so perfect. This is all cleaned um, geometry, so you can scroll down. I think it'll show you the wireframe. That would be great. You yeah, know what's but... interesting about this? I think this is a better workflow for production, like using these as scans, and then. Basically, imagine I make another guy like I made I made Floyd Mayweather, right? I could take yeah. this, use the texture and, and um, UV that you have just just by projecting, basically by transferring the the lowers, like what you do on the scans, right? Transfer this into yeah. my sculpt and just adjust the texture a bit to match it to Floyd. So that's like yeah. I feel like t t in scans are, you know, like kind of like killing texturing, basically. Yeah, I think everyone thought they were going to kill um, sculptors, but I think actually you're right. What what they've done is is sort of remove the need for texture, texture painting <laughs> to, to that sort of level. Um, yeah, which I, in a way, like I mean, I don't know. I, I used to like texturing, but I used to hate painting faces and yeah, know, all that sort of stuff. It takes forever, and it's you know it's something that's very very hard to get right the first time. But yeah. there's still quite a lot of post processing. I mean, you can see his sort of. Um, his raw texture image there you know we do a lot of delighting and stuff and mm -hmm. yeah but yeah i mean you're 100 percent right i think in terms of production the workflow speed increase using you know pre-made scan data and yeah. sculpting it in, or into whatever you want is 
is immense. You know, you can save hundreds of hours. Well, maybe not hundreds, but you know, you could save thirty hours, no problem. I mean, for production, yeah. I mean, but like for example, Chris Costa is, is I mean, doing a lot of um, like if you see, he, he's he's very good with everything, right? I mean, let's look at it. Uh, yeah, I keep meaning to buy one of his tutorials. I yeah, I think I think they, the they're amazing. <clears throat> yeah, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy too. I mean, mm. as far as I know, I don't know him personally, but he sounds like a good guy. Yeah, but my business partner was helping him out with some stuff. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. We can talk about that if you want. I don't know, but no, no, no account. personal, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> but you know, he he paints everything, right? So this is all handmade. Yeah. I guess like for personal project, it's more fun to do it this way. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, for production, I, I can see like I could take this if I wanted to make that the Floyd that I made. Let me actually load it here just just to show what I mean. Um, new project. So I'll just see if there's any questions quickly. Texture, raw scan, and then reproject texture onto clean version. Like. If I want to, I could let me load the lighting as well. I have a specific lighting for this guy. Cool. So I'll just quickly answer a few questions here. Sure. Go ahead. So Duran Phantom, um, I don't really have a favorite setting for alignment. It just is, um, I just use the default settings basically because we work with um, so many cameras, it basically aligns every time, no matter what kind of setting we use. So. <clears throat> To be honest, I'm not really a reality capture sort of uh, expert. I just sort of hit the go button and it, it tends to work. Um, Zephyr 5, I've not tried it, but I was seeing, I saw Jeffrey's um, tests on the scanning group. Uh, so I'm quite interested to try that. It's um, It looks quite interesting. And if it's a lot cheaper than RC, then it might be worth a go. Mm. Hey, look, it's Elena. Hey, Elena. Do you know Elena? Yep. We work together. Oh, cool. <laughs> Is there any more questions for you? Uh, question for James. Could you briefly explain a regular workflow for XYZ textures? Also, would you recommend using their assets? Uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend using them. Uh, Jeremy's amazing and the stuff he does is awesome. And it's, you know, it's super useful if you haven't got, um, well, not if you haven't got, but if you want to quickly add details to a mesh, I'm sure some of you've used them, have you? Which one? I X Y Z. Um. Um. I actually um, a friend of mine is using it. I didn't use it myself. Oh uh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, they're they're really good. They're really really amazing. Uh, we don't. I don't really have a workflow for using them because we don't really we don't really sort of have the, or need them for the scans because we get so yeah. much detail out of the textures anyway. That's the thing. Like, yeah, I mean, but, I'm I'm kind of wondering like in between X Y Z or. I think it's a good workflow. It's great. But like I was explaining this, right? I mean, if I want to make this guy, I can just go to your website, um, buy this a scan, transfer the details, transfer the geometry with the texture, right? That's the same yeah. same way we, the game production and film production works these days. They, they use the same base yeah, for exactly. the heads, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. I could just do that and then use that as a base and then add more details. I mean, I painted all these details and then I had some offers from the past use them for for the details I, these are like some of it are handmade I just oh, oh yeah really nice yeah how do you how do you touch the depth for you know your pores and uh sort of skin details what what do you have like a reference you used or i just looked at um really close-up images of, of floyd mayweather oh, right, i okay. just tried Fair to enough. see how <laughs> like try to copy it's not exactly the same but i tried to copy the same I actually don't remember yeah. what texture I used for the lips. This is not um, handmade. You know, this this is a this is a displacement I had. I don't know actually. I don't remember. It's an alpha. Yeah, it's an alpha. Mm. So yeah. I I used this as like um, like a bunch of alpha and stuff. Put it together like I yeah. brushed it. You know, but the thing is like cool. when you scan it, obviously. Um, actually, I'm not showing the screen. Oops, my bad. I wasn't. I forgot to switch the screen, <laughs> so people were, couldn't see. But yeah, I was saying like the the lips are. Um, I don't remember where the, where I got the alpha from, but these pores are. Um, I sculpted by hand. I usually have um have a 
quick offer that I just drag with yeah. mm -hmm. with this with drag yeah, drag rack drag yeah rectangle. exactly yeah with yeah. that and then I I use like um damage standard brush like I go over it and I just try to basically you know make these pores oh, you're more interesting sculpting in all the all the sort of connecting lines yourself yeah I mean not not all of them. this is an alpha right I mean I used an alpha for yeah, yeah. for some of these and then um I put the stuff in between I actually don't yeah. remember where the where the base texture I got it for this one I don't remember I made oh, this yeah, like really good. seven months ago or something like that have you, oh, tried, have you tried the have you tried doing a little inflate trick on that uh which one so if you zoom in on those pores now oh yes with the inflation like this yeah if you just drop down to the lowest level to your lowest sub d and save a morph target and save a morph there actually i had a morph one there let's see yeah uh, yeah and then just go back up right up back to your highest and then just do an inflate of like i don't know 0 0.5 on the whole thing like this on the whole thing yeah let's quite see. cool little oh that's heavy does it do anything yeah uh, try try like try five maybe your model's quite big yeah the model is big it's not the oh yeah it worked uh, there you go yeah it yeah, makes everything like a... that's cool everything it kind is... of like pinches everything in yeah it makes it makes it more realistic right I guess. Yeah, kind of and you can, you can go you can go back to your saved morph then and morph the, the actual base geometry back to the original shape, you know, if it's inflated too much. If you do it again, if you do another inflate of zero point or five, what if you did there? It's not much. Like where? Like here on this one? Uh on the highest one again. Oh. I mean if you Try do it on a layer as well, you can you can get some really so if you just do just do an inflate of ten, just see what that looks like. I think I messed it up. <laughs> you don't when when I click on it with the with the pen, it's oh that's cool. Uh, there you go. So oh, that's you interesting. Nice, soft. Yeah, yeah, that's how the skin is. See what I mean? Yeah. So it kind of takes away that really harsh CGI edge from the um, from the pores. Yeah. And you can just go back to your original morph type because that's obviously inflated the entire body. Mm -hmm. but if you go back to your original morph, then you can then. Oh, I see what you mean. The way it was. I see what you mean. You don't want to inflate the whole thing. You just want to inflate the details. No. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, that's perfect, man. It just softens things up. <laughs> that's interesting. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yes, and if you do that on a layer, and then you can um, save a morph after you've done the morph of the with the skin turned off, and then you can go around and you can adjust the level of inflation with the morph brush, if you know what uh, I mean. Oh uh, yes, if I if I put a layer or Oh, what do you mean? Yeah, if I put if before it... you'd done all that, you'd saved it as a layer and done all that on a layer. Mm -hmm. Then morph you can turn the layer matter. off, save a morph brush, and then you can go around and adjust the inflation with the. Hmm. That's interesting. You know, actually, yeah, one question nice. that I have. Um, so I made all of these details by hand, right? So yeah. what I wonder is if I grab this geometry to use a texture for that, um, is it going to work on that one? That's the question. If so, sorry, because the pores sorry, are different, course. right? The pores on this texture. What if you use the te the the texture to make the pore geometry? No, no, no. So here's the thing. Like now, I have the sculpt, right? Let's say I, I turn yeah. off the. Oops, this is blown out. I need to choose another color, right? So I have the pore details and everything. If I want yeah. to use this. As a as a texture for for that, let's say I take this low res and and basically wrap it around my higher my high res geometry, yeah. and so that I can have a texture. Then uh, the the albedo map on this one is not going to match with the high res on this one. No, no. So you have to, but you can just use the um, the, the details from the scan if you know what I mean. So you could completely oh. get rid of your. Details, well, the details from the scan because you kind of need them to match. The... Actually, hmm. I'll tell you what you could what you could do is you could to make your pores match. You could wrap the scan onto yours. Just take the texture map from the scan, blur it. Well, do the do you know about frequency separation? No. What is that? Uh, frequency separation is where. Can I share my screen? Yes. Let me actually get to your screen. Yeah. So, what you do is just open a texture here. 
Uh, I will just use this one. Hang on. So what you do with frequency separation, actually. Someone is asking texture baking marmoset or other tool. I would texture bake in Substance Painter. Everything in Painter. I'm actually yeah. making a tutorial just to do that. I'll show it to you guys. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. It's yeah Painter is like easy. I use, um, uh, what do I use for texture baking? I actually use RAP. RAP yeah. for texture baking. Mm -hmm. uh, Someone is asking if we have works. tried VR sculpting. I haven't tried it yet because I don't have, I had um, I had an HTC Vive. Uh, it's kind of not working anymore. So if I get a VR, I'm going to try that actually. And then could you drop one, not clean the scan in, in free stuff tab? Would be great to practice multi-camera. Yeah, could, uh, could uh, if, if anyone wants uh, a data set to practice with, uh, just send me an email. It's just jamie at 1024.info. Let me actually put, send them the email. Jamie at 1024. Dot info. Jamie, Jamie, J A M I E, right? J A M I E, yeah. yeah. That's the one. So if you guys email James, he's going to give you what you need. Uh, shall I show you this frequency separation thing? Because this is exactly what you want to do. Oh, like, let's see. So this is a cool little trick. So you've got two scans. Okay. Uh, and let's say you want to transfer the details from this scan, the skin details, onto this texture. Mm hmm. So. You don't want these sort of pores, which are, you know, she's quite fair skinned. So what you can yeah. do is you can take this image, copy it, paste it onto that one. Okay. And then take this one and blur it a little tiny bit. Like just not too much, just enough just to blur out the pore details. Uh-huh. So oh, okay. So, and then you take this, you desaturate it, you do a filter. High pass. Oh. And then you get the... Uh, the pores. The pores. And then you do uh, overlay. Oh, that's interesting. You, yes. So I see what you mean. The color. Yeah, the color yeah. The, so what I was thinking you could do with your scan or with your model is you could export um, a, a displacement map or a cavity map mm -hmm. um, from this model. And then you could use that as this layer. If you know what I mean, over the top of yeah. the scan texture color with, with a high blurred. pass filter. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you would get the details from your scan, the poor details applied to the color texture from the so details from your model applied to the color texture of the scan. Yeah, so you'd get some quite. I mean, that's very cool. Up. The other way, and stuff. yeah. The other way, one second. The other way I was thinking is to get the like that black guy. Um, let me actually open it on my screen. Like I could, I was actually thinking about that, but in a different way. I could take this and then kind of blur the the, the pores, and then uh, basically make a noise map from my displacement and put it on top of that top of that color. It's yeah, basically that's, similar that's what to what I, you do. Yeah. So yeah, that's exactly how you would do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking actually. Maybe maybe this is how I can keep my details and then and then use that kind of scan data or color for, for the base on something like this. So exactly. that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, I think that. with the, with the uh, scanning, actually the, the texturing is much easier comparing to the past. Yeah. It makes things a lot easier. Yeah. Like a lot easier. I mean, it's, it's kind of done for you. I mean, texturing in the past used to be the make or break, whether something looked realistic. Um, and nowadays, you know, you can just grab a, a photograph unwrap texture from nearly nearly mm -hmm. anywhere it, it's, it's quite easy it's very cool like yeah. these are the things that you learn when you do a scans you know like um, yeah it's just interesting um what's it's really random how um i'll just show my screen a second yeah i'm back uh, to your I'll screen show you something that i'm working on at the minute let me answer it's one really of the questions quickly before we get to that okay. uh uh Louise is asking, hey, Siamak, like, how do you get those straight edges on the UVs without distortion or it has distortion? I'm not sure what you mean, those. I, which I'm confused by that question, to be honest with you. Like, we UVs. can look at the. Do you have the UVs here on your? Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe he's talking about my texture maps. Yeah. Do you want to share it? So uh, we can answer his question. So, like, does he mean. Uh, there is a sort of oh, the answer yes. is yeah I think he means so how is this square and is this distorted yes this this is totally distorted 
But you're yeah. using a scan data to transfer it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so it's uh, I haven't painted it by hand. So yeah, distortion doesn't matter when you're baking because we're yeah. 100% baking everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it doesn't. It is distorted, but it doesn't matter. That's, That's sort of the answer. This is actually one of the reasons that I like a scans for texturing, because um, I can make it any UVs and make the face bigger. You know, that's actually how yeah. games are making really nice uh, faces, right? I mean, they look super detailed and and sharp and, and interesting. And the UVs yeah. are not distorted. The, the UVs are like perfect, um, like what you have exactly like that. That's how yeah. UV for games. Yeah. Even films, right? They do you do the same thing for films right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's just a sort of it's a pretty easy way of working, and it's a lot yeah. easier to have the maps like this. I think. I mean, it does. It is harder when it comes to if you actually want to paint on them in Photoshop. But I mean, nobody really does that anymore. It's all substance, and you know, everyone paints yeah. in 3D. So it's kind of yeah. It doesn't really matter. I don't think if the UVs are. A a bit distorted. I kind of feel like I mean, uh, with texturing XYZ, with the scan data and things like that, you may not even need to, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Like you may not need to paint realistic faces by hand anymore. Like creatures make sense, right? Because there's nothing to scan. Maybe yeah. there is from nature, but yeah, go ahead. You, you want to show, you wanted to share something else. Actually, I didn't. Uh, let you... I was going to show you a couple of things. So I'll show you what, let me just show you this thing that I'm working on at the minute. It's quite, it's kind of fits in with what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so I'm just doing this, um, uh, examples. Oops. So let me get this one. Uh, no, it's not that one. This one. So this is something we're working on at the minute. So <clears throat> I'll show you the marmoset that scene. So this is a, a completely generic um, wow. base head that we've got. So this is the amount. But that's a scan, of, right? That's a real fake. No, Are it's not. No, this what? is 50, 50 people combined into wow, one generic Wow, that's base. interesting. Yeah, so it's 50 heads all merged into one head. So you get this really. How did you generic... blend the 50 to get to this? Like you put like 2.5% 2, 2 of each one? Yeah, in, I did morph targets and said brush and just put uh, yeah zero point two or whatever it was in each morph, and it just b built this kind of like um wow sort of generic face. So I'll just load it. I can actually show you the um, that's very interesting. Yeah, it's it's really cool. So I've got a male and a female, and I've also got a combined um sort of male and female version. I'm just trying to mm -hmm. find it. Uh, head blender generic models. So I've got female male and super average so see that will load yeah so that's an average female face uh it's average male no yeah, hmm. female again male yeah so this is the difference between the male and female so you can see it there wow they're very close right they are and they aren't. I mean, if you look at the sort of the chin and the jaw and the the sort of the forehead, like yes, the yes. Brow, I mean, obviously, the there's like the yeah. But what I'm trying to say is like, I if you my feeling is like if you fix more, like actually, if you if you blend more, maybe they will even become more generic. Become and yes, I have done a generic. So this is a super average. So this is the combination of all of them. So this is a hundred. That's female. That's male. And that's a hundred male and female. Together. Wow, that's a mix of so male and like female. A, so they end up looking like this, which is quite a sort of, you know, kind of, sort of pretty, quite attractive face, I guess, but proportionally, like very very average. But what you can, what we're working on at the minute is this cool these new texture maps that allow you to, just sort of, um, oops, swap textures. You're a so marmoset, you right? Yeah, this is all mom, is it? Yeah, so you can just swap the textures over, you know, and have a completely different set of textures on on any face. And they look different, completely different. Yeah, so it's amazing how much a texture map changes the look of a face. Yeah, that's that's how it's done in games, right? I mean, they yeah, mm -hmm. they these use are a lot like of super detailed. Yeah. So we're doing them. So the actual maps themselves come with them. Um, you know, we've got displacement, and then we've got normal, and then we've got normal co or color like D-lit color and then normal color. Mm -hmm. So we've got the 
the whole set, and that would be there'll be about a hundred of these, and you'll be able to sort of swap. You know. Yeah, you'd that's just be able to use that as a, a base sculpt, a base mesh, and just sculpt, and then choose your skin texture afterwards. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the idea. That is very cool. Yeah, hopefully, it's kind of be able. It's it's a weird feeling, like you see like mix of hundred people, how they yeah. look, right? I mean, it's interesting that technology can allow you to do this. This is actually scientifically correct. Like this yeah, is hundred yeah, percent accurate it's, data. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hundred percent accurate. And it's well, I mean, it's we've made it symmetrical, so I guess it's not. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was. Um, there was quite a lot during the whole lockdown phase. We put a a thing out saying you can use this data for. Um, making masks and breathing equipment and quite a few mm -hmm. uh, big sort of medical companies got in touch with us and we, we gave them handed over all the data because uh, mm -hmm. it's quite obviously being able to create a generic human face is quite quite useful for creating um you know masks and breathing equipment that can yeah fit a, a wide very large sort of um, diverse variety of people yeah so it was, it was quite useful for that so you're you're basically creating something to to make masks to, pr to help like no, that? No, no, it's just, just what we did. We just thought it might be useful. Oh, so, that's interesting. You know, so we sort of gave it all away. And it was that is interesting. People. That's, that's very cool. cool. I'm waiting. Yeah. I, I think Michael messaged me, Mike Nash. I'm waiting to oh, see right, if he cool. can join. That would be cool if he can join as well. Yeah. I mean, maybe we can answer some questions. Do you guys have any questions? No? I'm just having a look. Did you, uh, did you look at Tesla to buy Tesla? Pardon, sorry. Did you try? Did you look at Tesla to see if you can buy? You want to buy one? The Teslas? Uh, yeah, I've had a look. I don't know yet. Sure we, <laughs> we've just we've just started hiring a few new people for the oh. office and stuff, so it's all a bit scary. So I don't know if um, I don't know if now's the time to yeah. splash the cash on Teslas. <laughs> 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 but maybe, maybe I don't know. That would be cool. Uh, sorry, what's Nate saying? Uh, my final art project this year at uni was based on the principle of using the multi-texture base mesh. Oh, cool. Nice. It will be in 10 years, any character artist, if you can do automatically 3D. I don't think they will do humans automatically ever. Like, character artists will always have a job. You know? Yeah. There, there, will, there like... will always be something for us to do. I'm actually thinking yeah, to completely be. shift like from organic to after I, I spoke to Mike and to Dean uh, Eden Grazio. Let me actually share his portfolio so people can see what I'm talking about. Not there. Have you seen the uh, Reillusion character maker thing? Which one is that? No. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. It's Reillusion, the company that make it, and it's kind of like a new, like sort of DAS. You know that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. well, kind of makes mutant people with like oh wow skin and <laughs> let's let's share. Do you want to share it on your screen after this in a second? Well, I was gonna do a thing about it because it's uh, maybe you can share it now. Look. So it's like a. But I was gonna talk about it a bit at some point on Facebook, maybe because it's. Um, Uh, Joran is asking what type of, uh, what kind of equip uh, requirements you have for other scans than human, poly count, UV space, setting, and such. I'm not sure if I understand that question. What kind Scan of requirements you have for other scans than human, poly count, UV space, settings, and such? That's a bad, bad chip website. Uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I fully understand. Um, I think uh, I think what you're asking is is um, you know what what sort of specs are we looking for for scan based uh, models? Um, and I think um, that it, with, with reference to bad chip, if you want to put something on there, it, it should be something that's production ready. If you know, what I mean, people that's what people want. Um, so you know, UVs laid out properly, textures cleaned, and you know. Um, no sort of artifacts or anything like that supplied, you know, in formats that aren't JPEG, basically. Um, like professional products is kind of what we're what we're aiming the site at. Um, 
his character created with headshot. The results are terrifying there. Yeah, the results, this is what I was going to say, the results are actually terrifying. Um, the, the reason I think that um, with the character creator that you can't get decent characters is because you're just morphing around a um, sort of bland generic head with no detail. Um, let me just look on my art station a second. So to get like a you know this kind of detail with this sort of character in a face, you just yeah, can't do so. that with with something like Character Creator. Um, you just end up with these. Everyone looks the same, basically. With Character Creator, is that a software? What is it? I actually yeah. never heard of it. Yeah, it's like this sort of uh, Reillusion software. It's quite interesting, but it's kind of you know everything looks wrong. Nothing looks human. Yeah, that doesn't look like a <laughs> what yeah, realistic scan workflow. It doesn't really. Realistic know. scan oh. workflow, but that's not a scan, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. But, I wouldn't yeah. even use that. Doesn't doesn't it's look different. any good at all. No, but this is the thing everyone's sort of saying. Oh, you know, it's going to take our jobs, but I don't. Think it's it impossible. Is impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. It's, like it's impossible. Say, it's so much for a character artist to do. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to do. I mean, that's what I was trying to say. Like, um, if you look at, do you see my desktop? Uh, where's it like, on Hangouts? Yeah, when uh, I was, I spoke to this yeah. guy yesterday, and uh, oh, it was wow. a, it was a very good conversation. I will share it next Tuesday, if everything goes well. I'm thinking actually to start uh, getting into these kind of things, like uh, designing um, industrial stuff or robots or guns mm -hmm. and things like that, because cool. Um, it's different. It's uh, something that I feel like I'm I'm missing, you know, and mm -hmm. everyone. He, he had so much passion to it that it was kind of like, um, how do I say, like made me think about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> mm. So uh, I might actually join. Michael wants to join us, actually, Mike Nash. Let me actually okay, cool. ask him. We might have to do some adjustments on Zoom quickly. Oh. Let me actually invite him into Zoom. Hold on a second, guys. Um, let's have Just Mike Nash as well. While you're doing that. Yeah, if you can answer questions. Let's have some interesting conversation with Mike is very good with like he brings up a lot of good topics, which is interesting. I, I really cool. enjoy talking to him. He's going to join now. And he wanted to meet with you as well. I was like, so let's join tomorrow because. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I spoke. Well, I think my business partner spoke to him on. Oh, to Mike Nash. Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I was like basically looking at this. I mean, talking to this guy, and he was kind of his his passion was infectious. Like, um, mm. he actually made me think about this more. To be honest with you, yeah, it's you really know? cool. It's a different sort of skill. It's like industrial design, isn't it? Yes, it's, like it's very different, different. Sort of skill set. But the yeah. interesting part is like, if you want to design a robot like this, you need to have you need to understand human anatomy. Yeah, you know that's that's the closest thing to that. Like, I mean. And such a great design. I like it so much. Yeah, like even, it's really cool. Yeah. It's quite brutal. Yeah. Or he does really cool stuff. Like I'm, I'm thinking actually to get into product design. Like if you see, mm -hmm. he has a store. He he sells his stuff. Um, muzzle brakes for guns or yeah, cool. uh, different things, you know. people. Some people don't yeah. like guns, but it doesn't matter. Is that all? Um, is, he, is, he, is he like a traditional modeler or is he sculpting it all? No, he, stuff and stuff no he, he actually... He used Moe three D and um, other other applications. Like he's doing CAD basically. Right. These are all uh, products, real products. Like this could be. Yeah. A, I don't know if this one is. Where is it? I missed it. I don't know if what the, the, the thumbnail is different. This is a real product. So yeah, right, cool. Which is which is pretty cool. Mm. Is there a... Yeah, I guess there's all sorts of other things that go into that as well, like tolerances and yeah, like uh, screw sizes and all the stuff you need to actually produce something in real life rather than just yeah. sort of model it so it looks good. It's very cool. I think Mike Nash is joining yeah. us. Let's see. No, he's is not it? yet. Waiting. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that's very cool, right? I mean, uh, industrial design, it's a different topic, but it's like, I think there is a sort of interest, like... I did a lot of creatures, characters, and all sorts of things. Armors, warriors, like samurais, World War II characters, everything, right? 
And I'm like, yeah. I need to do something to, to be able to, to see it in real life, like an actual product. That's why I talked to you like the other day. I wanted to uh, print this one. Let me actually share it. I wanted to print this one. I'm actually thinking to still researching about uh, which printer I should get. Like I want to print this oh, one, yeah, yeah, this yeah. guy into an actual statue. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was, I was telling, saying I would buy one. You will definitely buy one. <laughs> if you buy one, I will make it. <laughs> okay. Well, I definitely will. <laughs> I don't know. It depends if you make it and then want like seven grand for it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let me ask you this. How much should I price this in your opinion? What if, if you want to sell it as a digital product? No, not digital. Um, print it. So physical. Yeah. Uh, I guess you'd have to factor in quite a lot of stuff like postage. Like if somebody in, you know, Israel bought it, could you afford, like, what would be the sort of postage on that? Um, mm -hmm. You know, breakages, returns, there's all sorts of things with physical products are a lot more difficult than, you know, just selling a digital file. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I don't really know much about physical products, to be completely honest. Um, if I was selling it digitally, I'd probably sell, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty amazing model and a lot, you know, people can learn a lot from it. Yeah. Um, I spent so yeah, much time on it. <laughs> yeah. I'd probably for like a private license, I'd probably say about 90 pounds. And then for like a commercial one, you know, if, I don't know why anyone would use it commercially. Though, yeah. The there's thing. no commercial use for this. There's no commercial use for it. Yeah. So maybe like 120 pounds, 120 like, pounds. Yeah, one hundred and fifty dollars, something like That's that. That's interesting. But just a guess, you know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if like other artists would would say that would they would sell it for two, I don't know, thirty dollar, twenty dollar. <laughs> it depends. Two dollar skill. I mean, you yeah, spent takes... your whole life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the thing. That's the thing that everyone is missing. You spend your whole yeah. life to, to. This is actually one of the things that I spoke to with Aiden yesterday. And mm -hmm. he was saying the same. It's not about like how much time you spend. It's about like how much time you spent in the past, like 15 years. Exactly. Yeah. Is that your experience? So that's how you should charge based on that. Yeah. But I mean, it's like the old, uh, like, you know, it maybe took you yeah. three days to make, but, you know, yeah, three, four years of practicing just to, to get to the point where you can do that. Yeah, and it's, I agree. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if, if, if people want to basically, you know, look at your work and, you know, hey, look, yeah, hey, he's Mike. here. Let me actually fix the. Can't What's hear up, Mike? We don't hear you yet. If you can fix your audio, let me actually fix these cameras. Is this on the Zoom? Uh, Mike, I cannot hear you yet. Hello. Yeah, I'll see if there's any uh, questions. Maybe I should have him on uh, Hangout. Do you want to join on Hangout for your audio, Mike? I cannot hear you. Hello. Yeah, someone's just saying that they uh, had a client who used a uh, character maker to deliver a uh, like a model, and they had to completely redo it all. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine that's the case. I mean, it's, of course, it's a fairly generic kind of yeah. output. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't work to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if someone gave you like a, a DAS model, if you paid them, you'd be pretty pissed off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, fix this quickly. Ultimaker, Nate's recommending the Ultimaker. Should already be joined. Here we go. Oh, we so, hear you mm. finally, Mr. Mike Nash. Is it working? Yes. Hey, James, how's it going? Hey, Mike, not bad. How's things? Yeah, yeah they're well. I'm well, so. Cool. Good, good, good to finally, finally speak to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. We've, have we talked off and on between messages? I know I've talked, is it Chris? Or... I think you've been talking to like a mixture of me and Chris. Like, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's got like a weird, like, Facebook hybrid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sort of sensed it happening. So. Yeah. How are you? Cool. Yeah, How are you very good. Yeah. yeah. How's, How's it going, dude? Yeah. I'm yeah. just trying to fix this uh, screen so we can. I, th I thought you guys are already live. All right. Yeah, we are live. Yeah, we are live. We are. Yeah. Don't, say anything, really Don't say, <laughs> yeah. say anything weird. Don't say anything weird. 
Yeah. <laughs> <It's like weird. laughs> what, what like? <laughs> we were actually talking about some uh, scan stuff and, you know, uh, different things, basically. So scan data and that's what, um, so you've been, James, have you been, it's kind of like your bread and butter in the sense that, uh, uh the film yeah. and, uh, <laughs> I think yeah. this, the scanning work is, we kind of, um, yeah, I mean, we're not actually really working for clients that much at the minute. Um, mm. we're both basically doing our own stuff, um, which I think is what Chris was kind of talking to you about. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, we haven't really had a client job for four months, five months, something like that. Yeah. Is um, it because of the coronavirus? No, no, we've had plenty of plenty of offers. We're just sort of mm. trying to do our own stuff, work on the store, work on Bad Ship, and then we're, we're making a game with the guys in the room next to us. So we're doing a boxing game. Oh, so, I mean, cool. they are, yeah. we're, we're doing all the scanning for them. It's about 50 or 60 people, something yeah. like that. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. What about yourself? What are you working on? Yeah, I've just been doing personal stuff and then... Uh, Net ease of uh, approached me to do some. some oh, what happened to that? I'm sure, you were still I'm waiting. Finding out. Well, I told him next month, so because I wanted to finish up on a few things here and uh, mm -hmm. just jump into it, and try and get things. Because once you start jumping into client work, it's kind of like all the other stuff kind of falls to the yeah. wayside. So, yeah. so distracted and uh, yeah, doing. Uh, I I want to do. Uh, some print work and stuff like that. I've talked to CMAC about that and thought getting things printed. And yeah, I, I was out of curiosity. Uh, I thought of starting up a scan company up in Australia because uh, we right, don't have cool. anything. We don't have anything here. Like I also was thinking like there's nothing, there's nothing local. And I'm like, well, there's kind of that thing of when you scan people, you get the, the country's origin of their people. Yeah. Kind of yeah. On database and, yeah um, a different expression comes through and mm -hmm. it would be interesting like so i guess i could ask you the question um what what, what does it take to kind of open that up as a company like things like uh, equipment and all, all yeah. the things that you might need to know yeah i mean it's it's quite a simple like it's a fairly straightforward business plan i mean you basically buy a lot of cameras uh stick them in a big ring using some kind of tripods or or uh, we use aluminium bracing like a uh, sort of like a frame that we built from new tech yeah. um and it's i mean if you want to do it i'm more than happy to help you um it's, yeah that'd be that'd be pretty, pretty uh, cool. but yeah it's, it's basically building the scanner and then the the hardest thing once you've done that is actually getting people in and um, getting clients in or doing mm. what you so we we very early on decided that our main focus wasn't going to be client work it was going to be you know digital sales online because we felt that as a service scanning could quite easily sort of disappear quite quickly if you know what i mean with too many other studios springing up and undercutting yeah. and you know it's always going to happen so we kind of distance mm. ourselves from that a little bit um but yeah i mean it's as a service industry it, that actually hasn't happened it's been really really busy and has been consistently busy for the last 10 years nearly um, yeah so yeah i mean if you want to do it um you know i'm more than happy to help you um is so like uh the camera set up and the, the rig set up and do you have to buy really expensive cameras or no, you don't have no, to? You can. So we use, um, so we've got a couple of expensive ones. We've got some five DSRs. They're about three and a half thousand pounds. I don't know what mm. that is in Australian dollars. Yeah. Um, uh, but we've only got about 10 of those. And then the rest are just uh, like 100 Ds, which are about 300 pounds each. Oh. Um, so, I mean, it is expensive. But, I mean, you know, to build a good scanner would cost you best part of a hundred thousand mm. but you know whenever you're doing client work you can sometimes make that back in one job if you know what i mean so oh, yeah. it's yeah it's um mm. it's yeah it's an interesting sort of yeah so and actually driving in yeah can i say? can i answer a question someone asked the question nien no nine no i don't know how to say the name he says, I have a different question. Are studios important if I want to go to America and do 3D stuff in game dev? I mean, that's a very generic question. It's hard to exactly answer it. I mean, I, I, I'm i a good example, I guess. Like, um, I didn't know that I'm going to come to US, actually. I didn't plan for it, and it happened. And I came here because of my job as a character artist. 
I think you know about it, James, right? We were talking about it before, like when yeah. I moved and the stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a very interesting story because um, I never thought that I would move here. I, I didn't know that it's going to happen. I had the job offer to go to Japan to work with Hideo Kojima on Metal Gear 5. I told you about that, Mike, as well, right? Mm. Mm. Both of you. I think you know about it as well, right? I heard the whole story. Oh, I, I'll tell you about the whole story later. But it's interesting because I wanted to go. Uh, I was. I got a job offer. I, I got an actual job offer, and then it got canceled uh, for political reason. Not not the political politics. Uh, I guess other studio reason. I guess from Kojima's side. I don't know. And then that was the time like Kojima was basically changing his. Um, like Konami and Kojima, they got separated, and Kojima was going to start his own business. It's interesting because that got canceled, and I was approached by Crytek. They wanted to take me to Germany to interview me, and then I got an offer from US from a small studio which doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. I'm still in talk, in, in like in, I still chat with uh, with the owner of that studio, Dark Side Games, um, um, Rick Daniels. He's a nice guy. Um, unfortunately, they, they got into a business problem and obviously the, the studio basically closed. And, you know, after that, I moved to US, right, with them. And then my career started here. It was just random. So, I mean, he's asking if he wants to come to US. Um, is it a good way? I mean, I guess whatever you do, if you're good at it, if there's demand for it, you can use your skill set to go anywhere you want, I guess, right? I mean, obviously, games mm -hmm. has more demand in US. VFX has more in demand maybe in UK, I, I guess, right? There's more mm -hmm. VFX companies in UK and Canada compared to U US. I don't know. Am I correct? Yeah, or? yeah the UK is like um, London's just full of VFX companies. But yeah. I think, from what I know, making games in the US would be preferable to VFX in yes. Soho. Because yeah, the hours are horrendous from what I've heard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the salaries are much higher here for game jobs. It's a, it's a different market. But yeah, I mean, if anyone wants to come here, they can, if they're, they do a good job. I think Mike can easily move to US without a problem if yeah. he decides to. Can, can I just say as well, like, um, <laughs> I think like uh, last time we were chatting, um, and it's, this is something I didn't know. I'm not going to say any like numbers or anything, but I have That's no fine. idea. Yeah. The uh, what the salary difference was in the UK. Yes. To the US. It's huge. But the US is about three, three to four times. That's actually uh, it depends. It's not three to four times. I would say it's about two times. Um, you reckon? Yes. I mean, um, well, depends. Depends on your ex ex uh, skill as skill set as well, right? Right. If you have more experience, obviously you get paid more. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that just if, doesn't happen really here, though. You yes, get paid a certain amount. Exactly. You hit that wall. Well, actually, yes. If it. you say that, then there is no there is no cap here because I guess um, maybe because of the way that U.S. market works, capitalism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you do more, if you there is a chance for you to grow more and make more. So, yeah, like, let's yeah. say Mike Nash is, if he wants, if he works here, he will definitely make more money here than UK. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I know that, like, he, he will make three times more than, or four times more here than UK, or five times more here than UK because of his skill set. It's unique, right? And actually, he doesn't need to be here because what you do is unique. So you can mm -hmm. make as much as you want anywhere. There is no cap to it. But yeah, in well, general, was... general market is cheaper in, in UK. Mm. I mean, that's the whole reason of the internet, right? So they create an even playing field. That's how I look at things. Mm. And uh, you have people, just because they live in cheap countries, they will charge a um, lower rate even if they're really skilled. And you have that with, with artists coming up now. They're developing a really good skill set, and really unique, and they think they can't charge this amount of money because where they live, it's in comparison. And so it's like, what about in comparison? Like, that's all they're thinking about. But if you compare it to the... the Oh, well, quotations, global superpower of who, who are in charge of majority of doing the work. And it's the U.S., right? We, the U.S. leads, the rest follow. That's, yes. that's how the economy has always worked. And so why not follow that for the, the game industry and for everything else? Because ultimately, where's the money going at the end of the day? If it's going to U.S. companies, 
and they're charging this amount of money. Yeah. So like even even for games, we get charged. The stupid thing for games in Australia, we get charged a hundred dollars for a game. Wow, so, that hundred US dollar. Ninety eight dollars just to put it under that stupid psychological. It's cheap bullshit, and <laughs> like it. <laughs> wow. It's like we've got a ten percent GST. So and things we have ten percent GST on. I find it ridiculous that we have GST on a digital product. What's what's which, GST? Sorry, that's a tax or something. Services. Uh, right, it's a okay. goods and what? services. So yeah. it used to just be on fruits, you know, the handling of fruits and the shipping of fruits. Now we have it on digital things, and um, I don't have to necessarily do it, um, charge my clients for it. But there's, there, I'm not sure if like that at some point that they will or not, but. Um, like when you ever you ask the taxation office. So if I was to work for a company in Australia, I would have to charge GST, but overseas you don't. So, but I think at some point they might want to like, either they do or they don't, but it's like a gray area. So it's, it is, it's, I find it really pathetic that um, we get, because we already get, we already get taxed. And then I'm not sure if the UK work like that. Cause I think we take some things from the UK and we like, regurgitate it in our own unique way yeah you've got um so if we sell something in australia we have to charge something called moss vat which is like a digital sales tax that is now popping up all over the world so every country so because we sell yeah. digital products in our store if you look on it if you buy something in like um i don't know like uh like different like california has its own moss vat its own digital sales mm. tax and australia has just launched it now and we have to register of tax in every single country and state in the world that we sell a uh, product to so for example if we sold um 50 50 pounds worth of products to like someone in texas we would then have to get a tax uh, an accountant in texas to file that return which would be you know be about five pounds yeah i mean that's the way everything's going so i mean there's there are ways of of dealing with it like um, on a on a sort of mass kind of a like bulk payment system that we have over here um mm. but yeah everyone everyone's real like you're saying like the digital products uh, it's a global mm. market and it's a global economy and whether people realize that or not the countries who are dealing and you know the digital products are definitely starting to cotton on to it and st- start charging tax and you mm. know looking at it as a sort of global economy or a global marketplace yeah and that's the way it's going to go <clears throat> Have you guys noticed like we are on three different part of the world? Like I'm on the mm. end of it. Uh, mm-hmm. My crash is in the beginning and James yeah. is in the middle. <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> I'm in like the, the blast zone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Illuminati confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, another guy was asking, um, let me read the question. Is it more expensive to live in the U.S.? And then there's also, I think the best country and uh, I think the best country and company to work is the internet. That is true, uh, but that's that depends actually. If you live in a country that censors internet, um, you know, then you don't have any any internet basically. So, I mean, when I was in Iran, I couldn't work because everything was closed. Was that? You can get around that these days. Uh, not not really. When they control the bandwidth. Right. I mean, my internet right now is one gig. It's fast. It's very mm. fast. Like I can download anything I want in an instant, like quick. Like mm. um, yesterday, Eden sent me a file, uh, audio file for t- one gig and a half. He sent it to me and I just pressed download. And I was like, in a second, I was like, oh, it's there. It was just done. Yeah. So yeah, you don't have access to that in Iran. Or I don't know how China is. I don't know about China. Um, I've mm. seen a lot of Chinese 5G kind of examples on YouTube and stuff where they're showing mm. like two gigs a second kind of like mad download speeds. Wow. I mean, we're, we're still on like 40 megs here. Oh, in, in UK, UK 40 megs? Oh, yeah, it's terrible. It's what? Like yeah. Yeah, That's like weird. Basement, 40 meg like, download? Cranking 40 meg download. handle. Uh, 40 meg download, about 10 up. If you're lucky. My, uh, my no, download we, is like we're, we're 50 similar. meg. We're similar. How are you? Uh, right. Yeah. Cool. What? We just, we just, we had one meg upload. Really? Are you si- what? Yeah, cool. That doesn't make yeah, sense. I had to deal with that. I had to t- upload videos at one meg. Yeah. Upload. So yeah, I mean, um, 
And they are asking like, but it's more expensive to live in the U.S. <clears throat> I can say that it depends on where you live in the U.S. San Francisco, I lived in San Francisco. It's super expensive. It's probably the mm. most expensive place in the world. I don't know. That's what I thought. Like we rented a one bedroom for $3,200 a month. And I was like wow. 800 mm. square feet, like 80 meter. It's just a small place. Um, mm. But I moved to Seattle. I bought a house here and it's it's much cheaper. Like if I buy this house in, in San Francisco, it will be like three, four million dollars maybe. <laughs> so how many bedrooms is that? Uh, this one is four. Yeah. The one that we have is four. four. Yeah, so right. yeah, I made it one into an office, which is this one. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily expensive, really. Like you can make a lot of money here. Opportunities are higher, right? So it's up to you. I mean, my philosophy is like, you shouldn't care about if somewhere is expensive or cheap, you know? You should make enough money to not worry about if somewhere is expensive or cheap. You know what I mean? Do you think I mean, it matters? Like, um, on a, if, if, you know, our, our industry, our jobs that we do, if it truly is a global sort of, you know, setup, do you think it matters where you live? I mean, could you live in India? I mean, US wages? Uh, depends on what you, what you like, right? I mean, I, I really like um, Washington. It's a nice place. It's the, the weather is awesome for me. I like rain and summer is beautiful. I like the, the nature around here. I can just go out and there's a lake close to me. I can go swim right now, actually in the lake. So, so these are the things that I like, that right? Like... Yeah. And then mm -hmm. my wife has a good job here. She's enjoying her job. So that's why I'm like here. If she didn't work and if it was only me working, then it wouldn't matter. I could just go somewhere else to, to live you know, somewhere cheaper, but I, I like this area, but it depends, right? I mean, if Mike, for example, he's, he's a, he's completely free. You can just live anywhere you want. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But I think I personally, I think it matters where you live because, uh, for me, it's like to grow, you need to surround yourself with people that are better than you and they're growing. Right. So when I was in San Francisco, they were like, like everyone could be an entrepreneur. Like you go into a coffee shop, someone is making a new business. Someone is starting a new app. Someone is starting a new game company. So, I mean, if I live in another state, like in the middle of, like in Midwest, I don't know if I have that opportunity. It's a beautiful place, right? I mean, Utah or places like that, they're amazing. They're beautiful. But I may not have access to those opportunities. So, and I think living um, in an area with um, like-minded people and people that are better than you, it's actually making you to push yourself to a next to the next level, right? And I had this conversation with Mike, like the, the, the more I grow, the more, the more I learn, automatically the people that I face um, or become friends with, with, they're actually better than me. And that actually pushes me to go to the next level. Like yesterday I spoke to Eden and um, he's a great um, concept designer um, and also like um, industrial designer, right? He makes amazing products. Since yesterday, I'm actually thinking to start doing that. I start adding to my skill set, push myself to the next level, you know, or talking to you, James, for example, it actually opened my, my, my eyes and my mind about business side, like how much I can think about the business. Maybe I can learn this. Maybe I can learn that. Maybe I can read this book. And, or when I talk to Mike, it's a different, different scenario, you know, so everyone I think it's important where where you live because of these kind of interactions, hmm. you know. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess if you're just in a bedroom somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you, you don't, don't have, have that. that sort of, yeah, which is kind of yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So there is also, yeah. So so for me, expenses. I mean, um, Seattle is expensive. Washington is expensive, but um, I mean, I'm pushing myself to make enough money, to basically not worry about money and that's that's a that's a skill to master right it takes time to learn how to deal with money how to save money how to invest your money um like part of the things we were talking about mike about how, how much we should charge how much you should charge what is your price mm -hmm. you know eden is the same he was like this is my price that's it you want it you don't want it you know my price i'm not going to change my price so Which, i think I mean, that's hard for a lot of people to consider because what what in, what you end up doing is, is that people will it's life everything you know you've you've read the book and i've read that book uh, never split the difference and it's, yes it's that negotiation right that once once you start bringing down the price the price stays down and that's ultimately what happens 
and everything is negotiated. It's like there's a psychological part of it, and even pricing something, uh, people can um, might not be the actual actual number, but the psychological feeling behind that number at times. It's 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 a difference, something different about pricing things. I think people, you know, like people tend to round up numbers and make clean numbers and just be like cap and then they start to cap themselves past a certain psychological point as well they can't get past it and it's, it's that limiting factor of you're holding yourself back at the end of the day and um you just it's that i don't know it's that saying it's like um, if you jump the net will appear you know it's kind of like yeah jump see what happens and i and actually experience it point. um when you when you leave the fear behind there is so much mm. to explore and um, there is like a lot of opportunities out there that you can try. I mean, comfort zone is the worst enemy of a person to me. Like if you are staying in your comfort zone, you, you will never achieve your best, you know? Mm. And I wasn't scared of change because like, for example, I lived in Iran and I moved to Dubai, then I moved to the US. It's, it's, it's the constant change, you know? So, um, moving constantly i'm not worried about moving again i know the experience i know what happens when you move right or like i changed my job several times like more than any other um artists when you go to an interview that they ask you like why did you change your job like five times why do you change your job every two years i think that's that's a that's not a bad thing because you you grow you get better mm. you experience new things you know you get into more opportunities so um, it's actually good for humanity because if everyone can experience more, we can learn to do better things for life, right? If you know what I mean. So, mm. yeah, I mean. Plus, if you stay in one company, you it's like uh, when you're offered new job roles, the it's like if you stay in the company for five to six years, your pay will go up a lot less and then if you went in a company every two three years yeah your pay would go up it's just that it's the unless you're really vigilant and asking for more and really good with negotiation yeah your pay won't go up and that's what leaving in like pretty much it's like people tend to hop um it's kind of like jumping up with their pay and yeah it, it, there's something that has to be said with that and there's also that exchange happening there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So there's like a know. photogrammetry yeah. question, James. I don't know if you want to answer that or you wanted to say something else. Uh, let me just look and see. Uh, what do you think about AI and industry, for example? There's another one on the top as well. Oh, sorry. Oh, a photogrammetry question. What is your workflow for input database format, raw to 16-bit TIFF, rather? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is one of those things that everyone argues about. You know, should you use raw? Should you use 16-bit TIFFs? I mean, uh, I guess, yeah, you probably should use 16-bit TIFFs. Uh, there's a bit more information in them. Um, you know, I see that argument all the time. Everyone sort of bickering about color workflows and whatever. But, you know, I mean, we've, <clears throat> we've done scans for, you know, some of the biggest video games and, you know, movie projects in the world. And I've done those as JPEGs. And they've been perfectly happy to accept JPEG images, uh, scans built with JPEGs. Um, you know, you shoot a Macbeth chart and then you can color correct afterwards. Um, it's one of those things that people make a, it's kind of like boasting. They're like, you know, we, we've got the 16 bit workflow. You know, it doesn't actually really make any difference as far as I can tell within the industry at all. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we did uh, Death Stranding and I think we shot 800 scans. I think we did uh, two of them in raw and that was the two neutrals and then the rest were all jpeg and that was uh, you know sony's that they were they asked for that that was fine so yeah i mean i don't i don't think it really matters i mean if you want to be really pernickety about the sort of color workflow and everything then yeah 16 bits better um and there are techniques using raw to extract more details from from the actual uh color maps to, to get displacements and things like that, which can be, can be useful. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, it's not really as big a thing as everyone says it is. Yeah. 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 So what is, um, 
I think, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I was, um, uh, when you were talking about, um, like fear and like the, you know, sort of letting go and trying something yeah. to see what happens. Like, mm -hmm. um, I, th I was thinking about like, um, kind of what we were talking about before and like what we sort of touched on about like the global sort of industry and, you know, pricing and things like that. And I think that, uh, like, I think we talked about this last time, Samak, about, um, yeah. There not being a regulatory body in place almost to sort of kind of let people know what things should cost if you know what i mean and the, the undercutting that kind of takes place yes um because of that so somebody like you're saying in you know a country where wages aren't as high as they are in the us might think their work is worth less um and it, it's you know that but they must see other people's work and go hang on a minute you know this is people are charging you know ten thousand dollars for this why am i charging you know 500 or whatever I've, yeah I've, I've had i've had that chat so i've because of the russian so i had the chat the other day with a russian guy and um so in russia you know 200 dollars a day is considered amazing yeah, yeah. they live with 200 oh yeah they live with 500 dollar a year or 1000 dollar a month sorry so yeah so like 200 dollars a day it's like it's great and um if you get that as a i think if, i think if you get that as a freelancer it's considered good so but I've talked to like two people about it and recently talked to another person and they're working at, um, I think uh, it's like people can fly or that studio that worked on like bullet storm. And so I asked them, okay, how do you have any U S people living there and working there? Cause I was thinking, well, okay. Do the U S people go there and they ask for more and supposedly no. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm just thinking, all right, but these companies end up making all their money in, in, in these bigger companies too. So, are the companies at what point are these are these, are these companies all, all being honest about you know the higher ups getting a certain amount of money the people like I, I think it's I think wealth is not it's it's barely ever evenly distributed between um, employees I think it really does when these companies are in such cheap countries and I think a lot of these people look at going okay i can go to a cheap country and then pay then pay people nothing right which is for where they used to be say in the us see so you like you're saying yeah, that yeah. people get paid exponentially more so the question is why can they do it in the us and they can't do it in these foreign because countries, right? because capitalism is yeah it's a choice and also capitalism is choice. in effect here right so when you get better here automatically you, you will find ways to to make more money Right, you will you will mm -hmm. understand, discover your value better, right? The other day I was telling you, a BMW is the same price in US as it is in Germany and Australia. Maybe it's even more expensive mm -hmm. there in Europe or it's even more expensive. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, you cannot say that BMW is going to should be more expensive in US because people make more money here, or it should be mm -hmm. more expensive in UAE because there's there are lots of rich people there, right? It's the same price. I think uh, they charge that because they know the value of their cars. They know this, their product is this, is this much. What we do as artists is also we are selling a product and it's our skill set or whatever we make. That's a product we sell, right? So I would personally, I would never accept a job for a cheaper price if it's in Europe because they, 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 the expenses is less there, you know? This is my price and I'm going to charge it uh, the same way for everyone, you know, mm. and I think it's the same for you, Mike, and the same for James, right? I mean, when you scan a stuff for clients, you don't tell them, oh, you live in US, you should pay me more or you live in China, you should pay me less. So this is the mistake. Like in Russia, you can charge less. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so they, cause, cause they can't afford it. So the thing is, it's, as, the, it's just, it's a, yeah, that, it. yeah, it's, it's kind of well, funny it, because it, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, James. I was going to say, maybe it does work that way a little bit. I mean, if, if somebody, you know, I mean, clients do, like a client in America will have no problem paying our full rate, but, mm -hmm. you know, a client in India or China, well, maybe not China, but, you know, somebody somewhere where it's, you know, the, the rates aren't as high, like probably would not be able to afford what we would charge. So mm -hmm. in, in some cases we do drop our prices. We don't, we don't raise them, but we do drop them for, um, you know, clients that couldn't afford it. Um, but that's a special cases. It's not just because, you know. It, it depends on the project. If it's something yeah. cool that we want to do, then you know we'll we'll happily do it. 
I do that too. But the, the problem is like when the company makes millions of or billions of dollars and they will try to cut corners and, uh, you know, buy you yeah, cheaper. Yeah, I don't get that. Yeah, which well, is... that's just a, it's kind of like a, like somebody's job to try and get things for cheap, isn't it? Somebody sits there behind a the computer mm, yeah. sending out emails asking for, much. you know, 50% off because if they do that, then they're going to look good to their employer. And you know what? The, the problem comes here <laughs> <Yeah>. because <laughs> the, the one that, the, the, the ones that are dealing with budgets, I guess, um, they don't know like the differences between different artists and different skill sets. They just say, yeah. okay, you're a senior artist. You're a senior artist. So we only pay this much to a senior artist. That's our maximum cap. But, you know, I can be a senior artist. Mike can be a senior artist. Vitaly Bolgarov can be a senior artist. Title doesn't mean anything, you know? Mm. So they don't look at that. They're not like, okay, so how, how, how much skills do you have? How much experience do you have? What is your past? What can you do for us? Because as a senior artist, I'm, I'm person. I'm a fast modeler. Like I can make a character faster than anyone I, I know, for example. Just maybe it's an exaggeration, but I'm just saying as an example, right? I'll, I'll make it faster than James. But uh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a scanner. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I'm, I'm just messing with you. But let's say I'm, let's say you're making scan it faster. The troll. Scan yeah, the troll. Yeah, tro trolling, the troll. uh, trolling yeah. James. I'm sure <laughs> I can find one. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is. Like or or Mike is working faster than me, right? He he spends like two weeks to make a character, and I have to spend two months to make a character. And I'm a senior artist. He's a senior artist. Who should get paid more? Mike, right? I mean, he's saving so much mm. time for the company. Like even even if you get feedback, okay, you can finish it in three weeks, four weeks. But if if we get the same amount of money, you're essentially saving one month salary, right? Or one month of like payment contract, whatever it is. So I can say you should get paid one time and a half comparing to me or, or even two times because you're saving time on the project, you know? Mm. So that's the difference. That's why like when I talk to, to, to Eden, he's like, I, I'm going to share that podcast next week. That's very interesting. Um, mm. These are the things that some corporations don't understand or some studios don't, don't, don't look at it because the person who is dealing with is not necessarily good with like doesn't really understand the difference between art and design or how much this person can save time there is no measurement for that right the only way you can mm -hmm. measure it is if i if i do the same thing mike does the same thing and we sit together and then mike is finishing it faster than me then that's that's the way you measure it you can see how much value this guy has right yeah. but mike as a person he knows it himself so if he pushes for that if he knows his value he can get paid for for his value because he lives in it. He, he has confidence in it. He knows how, what he can do, right? He doesn't cut himself, undercut himself or anyone else, basically. I don't know if it's do clear. Do you guys understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. Do you think so for like, for like a long time, you know, I've always tried to be, been trying to figure out if there are any because of what we do and how we sell stuff and things. I've always been trying to figure out if there's a hard and fast rule for um, defining your like what you're worth, what your your value is as an artist, you know, what you can charge. For me? And I think, well, for, for anyone, yeah. you know, for, for any any person. And I think like uh, what you just said about like um, like time saving, that that sounds like it might be the sort of the closest that you could get to it. You know, if you could save somebody this much time by doing yeah. this quicker than everybody else to a level that's, you know, acceptable at least, then I guess you know, that's sort of a... It's time, it's hassle, it's just stress. It's like someone knows has yeah. some knowledge about the pipeline that other person doesn't know if you can train artists or if we can the quality is better all of that is, is they should i mean basically should be considered when they pay someone and the, you as an artist only you know it they don't know it mm -hmm. right if you if you tell them i much i charge this much they say okay we don't pay more than this this is our cap for senior you will be like okay that's your problem um but i charge this much because of this so do you guys want mm -hmm. this or not? You know, not mm -hmm. obviously this way. There should be, it should be in a professional way, like in a nice way. I'm just like talking just regularly with you guys now. But I'm like, if it's me, I'm, I'll be like, yeah, okay. Um, I understand that's your budget. But have you guys considered that with this package, with, with what I do, you get this and this and this. But do you get the same thing with, with the li limit that you have? Are you guys considering yeah. to save time? Mm -hmm. Are you guys considering to basically increase the quality or... You know, get the years of experience that I have. I brought, I bring with me. You know, I can give it to you guys. Um, how much do you think that worth? You know, so yeah, there's 
there is a certain quality level that you're not going to get. Like, no, as I was saying before, no one's, no one, as, as much as you look around, you've got people doing the same thing, but it's never the same thing. Like, it's never yeah. the same quality. It's never the same expression. So, you hire one person to do a design and hire another person to do a design. You're going to get two completely different designs and you thought maybe you could pull the same thing. So this person's cheaper, this person's more expensive, but the other person's been doing it for years and they're doing it in a different expression and different understanding and way, the way they look at it. And even if the other person did it faster, the person who's been designing for longer, the design will be, you know, four or five times better than the yes. other design. So yep. the the trade off is like this person could probably do it faster. It's the same type of design. It might be like I don't know, hard surface has details and all this other stuff, and the other one has hard surfaces and it has details, but it looks beautiful and has under has a really good understanding. So it depends on what, like if the client just wants something. It's like James, you said you work for a, a Kojima, right? And they have really really high quality designs in there. So you wouldn't just uh, chuck in a, a basic hard surface design and have it um, he would rather be like I'd rather the quality over the, the quantity yeah exactly. so yeah it, it depends where people are doing that like if they want quantity or uh, quality like so it's I think there is I think there's I'm not sure if quality has come down I think there's always a room for quality. It's just people, if they decide as a freelancer, you could decide to do it, be a quantity artist or a quality artist. So there's differences like micro differences of where you start shooting towards because you could do that. And I think um, I'm not sure if a generalist is a more of a quantity and they're doing more things because they're generally doing everything. I'm not sure if that would fall into that area, but you do have people just doing things for the sake of, um, doing things so it's it's kind of like the difference between someone who sits on instagram and takes a picture every day and uploads it and then there's another person who really sits and takes the right picture and then uploads it right and it depends like it's the same thing but that one picture that has has a lot of thought and um kind of time put into it will it will last longer in, in the psychology of people looking at it also. So like there, there's so many different ways to approach things in life. It's mm -hmm. kind of, and they say that we're um, in that, I guess it's kind of like when you scroll through Instagram, if you, if you saw, like, you know, the difference between something that you've seen and it, there's like a quality and an execution and a mastery behind it. And that person has put a lot of hours in. Yeah. And so, and then you look at someone who is doing technical stuff and they have all this technical skill and it's technically advanced and um, clever and all that. And they haven't really put in enough time to, for that mastery to kick in. And that's, I think that's a really big difference. And so when you talk about like Vitaly, Vitaly is at mastery. He's not at the, let me just chuck everything at it. He's doing yeah. mastery. <laughs> he knows That's exactly what he's doing. Everything is with purpose. Yeah. It's not just I'm I'm gonna so, put this detail in here and see how it looks. He passed so those, like those times you, already. So when you pay for mastery, you're paying for mastery. That's the difference. It's like paying for um I guess like uh, getting a really nice sword made. One one, you know, like a, a feudal sword, like a really high quality sword made versus a non high quality sword made. They're still the same thing but one is at yeah. a higher quality and it depends if you're getting that work. And I think there is, there's room for it. And I think Aiden uh, chooses to take those jobs on instead of he's taking on mastery jobs rather than I'm going to take on everything. Yeah. So, and he was saying the same. Yeah. He was like, I, I choose which project I, I work on. It's not just yeah, like he's because... waiting. Oh, please give me work. It's not that. And I think that's the, that's the thing that m the mindset that artists need to, they need to understand, like, I hear every time, like, how do I do this and get, get a job in a studio? I mean, it's just strange to me, like, that people set their goal to be a job in a studio. Just that, you know, that, that, that should be part of the goal, not just the final goal. That should be an experience in, in, in your life, right? When you do that, you're actually yeah. limiting yourself to increase your quality to reach the mastery level. So, like, during the Renaissance mm -hmm. time, um, 
you know, people used to work for masters as pupils. Like if someone was like doing carpenting and then I want to, I want to be a carpenter, right? I go to Mike's shop. He is the master of carpenting. He makes amazing chairs and amazing um, designs for uh, door frames and things like that, right? With a lot of beautiful sculptures on it and things like that. So if I want to learn that, I would probably have to work for Mike for years, right? But I will learn his the skill directly from, from Mike. So I'll do work for him. He will help me to understand how to become a good, good car, carpenter. That's a different uh, situation than... Because that way, like, I'm directly influenced by Mark, Mike, right? I'm, I'm learning from you and then... Seven years from now, I will be my own master. Or ten years from now, I can open my own shop, and I and I can pass that knowledge to someone else, right? That was like the way that it was done in the past, like during the Renaissance time, or when when musicians were teaching music or doing music. But now everyone is like, yeah, I want to get a job in a corporation, right? It's not necessarily it's not a bad thing actually, right? You want to get a job, you want to work, and all that. But the thing is. If you get a job too fast, you're actually limiting yourself to worry about the job and you won't have enough time to improve your skill set. Right? Yeah, I mean, do, do you not think maybe there's something to be said for doing that though and for, you know, mixing with those people like early on? Like, I mean, my first job, I didn't know. It was just at a games company. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I kind yeah. of like uh, specialized within that. Um, and you, you know you meet so many people in your first job when you're starting out and that everyone does different things and you can kind of go around and see what you like and yeah sort of f figure things out early on yeah that that's good right that's what i'm saying that, that it's good but if if the goal is like i want to work for this studio if that's the ultimate goal then you might be limited to that and you may not grow more you know because yeah. there's a there's a cap right the studio i don't know like to me it's like that like it. huh as soon as you hit that goal, you'd be like, what now? Yeah, so, exactly. What now? Exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, you fall into it, a depression. Yeah, that's why I brought the, the Renaissance uh, example. The popular wanted to become a carpenter. He, doesn't, he didn't want to work in that certain carpenting shop, right? But he found a good one. He found the master. He, he told him, okay, work for me. I'll teach you how to do it. And I need you to do this work for me. So it's a trade. Then I, and then the, the, I learn it. And then I, I get good at it. And then I... I move on and I do my own thing. I start teaching to other people. I'll be my own master. Um, you know, that that may not exactly work with the current um, market, like the corporations and big businesses. It's a, it's a different way, but you can you can find your ways, like like Vitaly, like, um, you know, Eden, or like you, James, like you, you worked in a small studio, you gained those experiences, but that was not your dream. You had bigger dreams and you still have dreams. Like when I talked to you, you were like, I still have a long way to go. You know, mm. so I mean, I think that yeah. mindset is also helps to mm. to even make way more money than like increase your price, increase your value, increase your experience and knowledge. Yeah. You know, don't limit yourself to a it small helps you thing. Have confidence in what you do, doesn't it? Yeah. Like I think what you were saying about like your goal. Like I am um, when I left university. Like my my goal basically was to to buy a Lotus. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> And I kind of, I kind of managed to do it after about three years, and like I just, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> like, exactly, that lost. happened to me. <laughs> yeah, I was lost, I was bored, and like, um, yeah, that's, uh, I just quit my job and like went to work for a different company, and that, that's kind of, kind of spiraled from there. If you know what I mean, like I, I didn't yeah. have a very, I didn't really have any sort of idea of, you know, where I wanted to go when I was younger, um, mm -hmm. and that, that was it, basically, by Lotus, and you know, once you've done that, like that's it's the epitome. Yeah, that that was yeah. <laughs> yeah material yeah, just... well, it's the saying: material possessions do not offer you any type exactly. of satisfaction. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah, goals. Not at all. It's so it's if it's a goal and it's it's here, like you actually don't have it yet. And so when you get it, you're like you're depressed immediately. Yeah. So you should always just be out of reach. And if you you're gonna yeah. be always so like they say, struggling is the the in struggle you're the most happiest when you have exactly. like nothing. It needs to be impossible, yeah. almost. I think yeah, my uh, my goal now is to to view the Earth from space. That's my uh, oh nice that's, impossible that's awesome goal. impossible goal. <laughs> oh, you don't know. I think maybe you might. Be I think that. I think no goal is <laughs> impossible. Every every goal you said is possible. It's just a matter of like if you want to do it or not. Like Elon Musk, maybe going to Mars might be impossible. Maybe if you're not yeah, ready be. to I go to that 
No, what why? Is, why do you say that? Like, how old are you now, James? Uh, 40. So I'm if, too old. I'll not be going to Mars. Well, be dying, dying well I mean, it might, might be because of, <laughs> I mean, if they go to Mars in 10 years and if you plan for it, you might be able to do it. Yeah, like, I wouldn't they be put at least stem like, cells. Just inject yourself. Stem cells. Like I can feel like <laughs> Ster- <Yeah>. steroids and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or just ro- ride up and go to Mars. <laughs> yeah, I'm young and healthy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Ace is asking you a question. He says, by the time be- someone becomes master on CG sculpting, do you think there might be better tools present in the market to make it make life easier, like it scans today? Obviously, that's true. And then not to mention, there are developers around the clock making tools like ZBrush, Marvelous, which no one knew about it a decade ago. Yeah, that's true. So my, my, my how do I say Like, I think the mastery level should not depend on the tool. I think someone should not be a master on a tool. Someone should be a master on, like, especially on the character side or what you do, Mike. It should be more focused on character design or industrial design or understanding shapes understanding what makes something beautiful that's what art is about mm-hmm. right art is about yeah. like understanding forms and it doesn't matter what tools you use like um, you can actually take a piece of clay if you understand art and if you understand design you can design a car in your, on your desk go to bmw and say hey i designed a car for you guys do you want to check it out you know what i mean mm. so yeah yeah you can you can definitely do do that if you focus so if you focus on the tools, you're screwed because it's like you're, you're just looking at tools. I mean, yeah. tools are tools. Like you're saying, when you um, were sculpting that head, you can, you should be able to sculpt it with like just your fingers, yes. essentially. If, yeah. If, and and maybe a, a little pop stick that you've carved out. Yeah. Like making your so because you, you you're looking at the line work and you're looking at the understanding of how that shape and form flows. And if you have yeah. no understanding of shape and form, you're just going to make a crappy little thing. And that's what I was saying. Like, if you're technical, it doesn't mean anything when people want things to look good. Yes. So, like, if, so if I've approached you, and you know, I want you to make this look good. They're not coming to you if you're a technical artist. Yes. So that's that's the difference. And so making making things look good require different attention and mastery. So that's um, there's a really good book um, called Mastery by Robert Greene. <laughs> yeah, that's a perfect really, really book. Good. And he, he, ex, he explains like, in detail what it takes uh, mm-hmm. to have mastery and, and everything that people really, they really should be listening to it to understand what that is. And it's sitting there and going through the suck, the suckage, like, oh, yes, yes. Sucking, and, and hating it. And um, that's what I told you last night, right? Hating it. Getting, I mm, mean, I don't like doing yeah, like working on, on the Lores, I had to push myself. I was tired, but that's the only way. You know, like you should push yourself to get to the mastery level. And it's not about mm. the tools to use. I mean, basically tools are just helping you to improve and there will be new tools all the time. But if you if you're a good designer, I mean, tools are becoming more um, optimized. They're, they're becoming mm. easier and easier to use, right? I mean, now you can make hair with Xgen easier than you could make hair like eight years ago 10 years ago when you were doing it mm-hmm. if you remember right so an extra is much easier and it's going to get easier and easier from now because computers are becoming faster people are becoming smarter the way they program stuff maybe there will be a new how, app yeah go ahead how easy do you think it's going to get realistically like given 20 no say 50 years what do you think i think the, um, I, I think 50 think years there will still be ours yeah, but I I think artists mm. will be like, so. uh, cre- yeah, they, they won't be. You think yeah. they will no, be I right? Think so. You, you don't can't think so? replace an artist. You can't replace an artist. Yes, you cannot. Look at, because look at look look at a thousand. What when when did Da Vinci make his statue? And not, yeah, and five hundred years ago. Door. Yeah, I mean I'm just, I'm just playing them? devil's advocate. No, you definitely can't. But I mean, yeah. just just to sort of play devil's advocate, if you uh, were to take the entire world sum. Like if you took all the artwork in the world, maybe maybe AI it, could come up with beast AI. Like, yeah, AI could, could do that. I mean, Something imagine like, like no, no. You know, well, you know well, why? Here's, oh. it's, not, it's only okay. So AI is only limited to what it can take in, right? The human brain is limited to the capacity of being creative, which, like your so, your brain is exponentially better than anything creativity. Like cr- your creative 
way of thinking about things will always be better than any AI because you feed it. So you feed it all these cool things. It can only do those cool things, right? But you could sit there and think of something new if you put time into it. And so I don't think it would ever replace. I think it would just supplement. I think that's what technology yes. is. is it, supplement. That's it's a good way to say it. supplement stuff. It's, so what, it's what about if we were to it. see like a, um, I mean, I, I don't know where I sit on this. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but what about if we would see like a surge of AI art that people really liked? And it basically, if you don't, if, if that saturates the market to a level where it makes everything else worthless in the same way that, you know, is happening a little bit with sort of market prices and things at the minute. Like, do you think that that could have I a, think the a fact, detrimental? I think the fact that you know it's AI takes away the takes away. Yeah, the art. that's what I think. I think if you know it's a computer, then it, it's kind of it's like having a you're like like you, like a handcrafted like ornament as opposed to something churned out of a CNC machine. Like it's mm, yeah. Well, for 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 example, so James, you scan people, right? And then yeah. you've got people who have actually aren't doing any scan work and they just sculpt it. Yeah, right? there's yeah. something about the human sculpture that the eye takes in and re-sculpts. Yeah, There's something yeah. about the translation. And I think it's so fine. The brain, the human brain sees it and sees the beauty of the conversion from from the human eye to the hand and into the, the, the subject. And so when you have that in a scan, you're like, okay, that's really cool and impressive that I can see every pore. But mm. it's um, like, you know, Chris Costa? Yeah, he, yeah. He does. There's Everything something super impressive about his yeah, it's something different you couldn't get that with a scan it but comes from heart some, man it, it comes from heart yes, the human the human yes. aspect of it you can't the ai is so cold and harsh it is so like yes when, you know when I we should... see you more and more it's a human disconnection and i think in life we're getting we seem to be getting away from that human connection but then all at the same time where we have a we have a, like it's, it sounds that that corny thing but i think at the moment we're having like a spiritual awakening realizing that we are so we've become so like addicted to smartphones going through all this cold disconnection when in fact that when a person makes something there's an emotional connection to that that's going into it you're feeding so like you might be feeding into the, in, say even into a computer you're feeding your emotions into it and when you feed a bunch of random emotions into a computer it becomes cold because the mm. output that comes out is just uh artificially generated it's algorithmic yeah. based so there's a disconnection and i think you no matter what as long as we we have a, a heart and a, a consciousness and like this the spiritual side of us i don't think we'll ever get away from doing that i think the fact that we might become i think we're going to become a different type of unwakening you look at what's happening now in the world and people are really people are really angry like at the fact that all these things of repression like everything happening at the moment it's i think it's maybe that's what we have what we're happening now is like a, a form of awakening and we've been locked down with everything's been taken away and then once you realize you take all these things away and if you think about what ai and all these things will do that's some of the type of the same type of feeling that will be imposed on us if we go towards pushing art and pushing everything towards this kind of algorithmic based um, thing that spits things out we'll just get more of this feeling of being locked locked within ourselves because we are human at the end of the day and we're never going to get away from the human condition ever yeah you're not going to get I, away it, from it unless you, know, you, the unless one you thing, download yourself and then you're completely in a different different body then you're away from the human condition so yeah i that, mean that would be the sorry mm. no it's okay um ace says like but it's kind of scary how much less demand human interaction would become or not needed in the upcoming upcoming years i think that is not true because the more the technology grows the more jobs are being created actually i think it's the opposite like imagine like the job mm -hmm. that i have like or what you do james or what i do or what mark mike does these kind of work didn't exist like 20 years ago exactly so and my my job is essentially the job that is supposedly taking jobs away from people but but you're not actually you're adding to their job exactly well it spawns just, an entire yeah. sort of new type of job which is like you know employs thousands of people now 
Yeah, so and I think an jobs of that happening in real time almost. Exactly, and I think jobs are not being taken away; they're just like uh, transforming changing. to a changing. Yeah, exactly, and and it's yeah. it's adding to it. Like it's becoming more uh, like there are more specialists. Like to to uh, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, a character artist would do everything. Now there is like hair specialist. Uh, someone is making the retopo. Someone is designing it. Someone is making the high res. So someone is scanning it, right? It's not a one person's job anymore. That's that's mm-hmm. past. So, and I and I and I think yeah. Mike is. I don't know. I, I I feel the same. I feel AI cannot replace it. AI will only probably probably add to what we do, because there is a sense of touch and um, uh, how do I say like feeling into the art that we create by hand that doesn't exist on. Um, how do I, think, I say? So 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 what I think with AI, say if you're designing something, especially a hard surface thing. If I was to draw a curvature and I want to chamfer or fill it along it, I can imagine I'm going to draw it with my hand and that will take the uh, the curvature of that finger movement and be like, I want to chamfer along here. And it will do that detail for me and it will um, be able to um, get what I am trying to throw across. Because if you look at the moment now, there's a lot of manual work and there's a lot of I want an edge like this and I want this to be this shape and I want this curvature to go into here. Especially with CAD. CAD is so archaic that you're like trying to knock everything together and get these fillets to work and they often don't work and things like that. And if yeah. you could get that that type of assistance from AI, that would be the next um, step. Because I think right now and it would make it would it would even actually go towards mastery even more. Because then I don't have to focus on technical stuff, and I can put more focus on mastery. It's yes. Like, um, yes. If you That's took what a, I wanted to say exactly. You just yeah. said it. So I think, I think everything is actually going towards mastery of certain things, and your attention can be more focused. But mastery is hard to do because people cannot put attention to one thing. We live in such a distracted world. You check your phone. You do this. You want to like go eat food you want to go out and do all this crap but they're actually sitting there and getting to a point like there's nothing like sitting there and going through this point of the the suckage and sucking at it and the thing is when you go through it go through it and go through it and go through it and you grind and then you have the the big aha moment and the big pop at the end of it that you you would never get you would never get to that point unless you sat there and went through the pain for it so yeah i i agree silence <laughs> i think there's, there's something right. with um like you're saying about the sort of like it with an ai like the um like you said the human appreciation of art like you, you could never have an ai create something artistically human would appreciate because it could never be human as well it would always be like a, a floating sort of, you know, digital consciousness in a, you know, with a completely different set of experiences. And like you were saying, that nuanced kind of like um, details that you can only get from a, from a master, like you would, you would definitely mm-hmm. never ever see that from, from a, a synthetic brain, I'm guessing, because it would never have experienced life as a human or appreciate anything that humans appreciate. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I was just, you know, just seeing I what think, you could say. <laughs> I, I think fear is just fear mm. nothing to be fit nothing to, you know it's it's an emotion at the end of the day and it's nothing to be like we imagine things as soon as you've put more thought into it and you've imagined it to be more fearful than it is it becomes more fearful than it is mm. yeah. and it's those emotions that we go through you just have to let it pass and be like yeah whatever it is it probably is and i can't comprehend i could never ever comprehend what it could be and the thing is, you probably be. I think you'd be probably pleasantly surprised by the outcome, and that generally happens all too often with things that you you do fear at times. You don't know where the path will go, and that's the that's the beauty of of life. Like nature has a flow, and we are a part of nature. And if you go along with it and use it and be acknowledgement of it, and you don't reject it. But the question is, um, if you don't get one of those chips in the back of your head, are you rejecting? You know, from Elon Musk, are you going to reject it, right? Do you go with the flow? Is that 
is that a natural progression of our evolution is to get the chip because everyone with the chip would have access to things much more quicker than you. I think I'm definitely getting I the think, chip. Yeah, I think everyone <laughs> is getting it. <laughs> straight, straight in there. <laughs> I think every t- everyone is getting it. Imagine this, like um, 10 years ago, I didn't, a, I didn't want to buy um, a smartphone. Like eight years ago, six years ago. Actually, six years ago. When everyone mm-hmm. had iPhone, I didn't, I didn't even have, have an, a smartphone. And then I had to eventually blend it into this market and get it. Yeah. There was no other yeah. choice. So... I think that's also, that's the way, like eventually, I think, I mean, we, we talk about like, um, nature. I think this is part of nature. What, what makes yeah. it not being part of nature? Oh, well, nothing. I mean, if it's, like, you know, right. I mean, these things are useful, aren't they? I mean, like things like, like not having an iPhone. I mean, it becomes a problem after a while because they're actually genuinely useful in yeah. you know, everyday life. Now. This, and the this things solve a lot of problems. They sort of, yeah. They, they weed themselves out and they don't, yeah. they don't become like a, you know, part of your life, but. You know, smartphones are, yeah, they're good to have. They are, <laughs> yes. If, um, mm. You know, actually, I had a question yeah. in the chat, um, James, about like bad chips. Like someone asked, let me see. Oh, let me have a look. I think uh, it's up there. I don't know. Do you want to go ahead and say stuff, Mike? Do you want to continue? I think you were talking and I stopped you. Oh, um, um, what time is it there? Uh, James, could you explain a bit eight, more about the new adventure? 8 a.m. Okay. Yeah. Michael, uh, do you want me to answer this question? It's, what was that? You know, uh, it's well, it's obviously just mar- like me. me yeah, that's myself. fine. That's fine. Market yourself. <laughs> that's fine, man. I mean, it's not necessarily yourself because you are doing something good for the art community. Well, yeah. So I guess, I mean, so the... Do you want to share a screen or something? Uh, yeah, I can share a screen. Yeah, hang on. Let me actually uh, get to. Hold on a second. Let me fix this. I need to fix something here. Let's know when it's sharing. Okay, <laughs> now it's sharing. Yeah. So this was our sort of little plan. So the, I mean, we've talked about it quite a lot tonight, but my sort of pet peeve is kind of people underpricing things and you know looking on ArtStation and various other sites and you sort of see you know somebody's put something on for a dollar and it's yeah. you know <laughs> amazing artwork for a dollar and it's like you know people look at that and they think how is that how is that possible and, oh this must only be worth a dollar and that's sort of the general consensus of you know consumers of this stuff now and it is just devaluing absolutely everything like the entire industry you know when you see that it makes it look like a joke it's kind of like, well, if he, they can do that for a dollar, then, you know, what can they do for two dollars? Mm. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I think yeah. what happens is it's because I'm online. I might sell a hundred of these. Or, exactly. Yeah. Just total yeah. bollocks. Yeah. Utter nonsense. You can sell. So we sell stuff for like some of our products are three thousand pounds on the scan store mm. and we mm. sell those. So to think that your you know product is one dollar and that's the only way you're going to sell it. It's just like a, you must have. You know, there's just no confidence in your in your work. Um, so anyway, the the idea behind bad ship was that we were sort of trying to move away from that. Um, so we're trying to sort of help people. It's a marketplace, um, and we're trying to sort of help people price their products. You know, at like decent prices, it's going to make them money. So, you know, I think this um, Julie, I think was selling this on one of the other sites for. I can't remember, like ten dollars or something like that, and we were sort of saying, well, it's you know, it's worth a lot more than that, you know, a lot more. But yeah. we sort of said, well, you know, twenty-five pounds, which is about thirty-five dollars, probably up to about seventy, um, which is sort of in line with what Marvelous Designer are doing, selling their products for and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, the the whole idea is basically to try and drag the the sort of whole unregulated marketplace out of the gutter and sort of try to get artists more money for their work if you know what i mean like get get to give them a, a way of selling their products so they can get what they're worth basically rather than having to compete with people you know pricing it just basically nothing they might as well give them away um, yeah which is i mean i saw one of the marketplaces that they actually had a uh, like a, a button that you could just lower the price I'm not going to say which one it was. But what? It was, it was on. Yeah, it's on for twenty dollars, and it's got a plus and a minus next to it, and you just click the minus all the way down to a dollar, and then nice. click buy. And that's, uh, 
that's fine. <laughs> it's just out of control. Jeez. It's ridiculous. And so why won't we just sell it? Just give it for free. I don't understand. Yeah, exactly. Do it for free. Yeah, if you're going to do it for a dollar, do it for free. That, yeah. that should be the way it is because you're damaging, you're hurting everybody. And that's, that is that's the idea behind it. <clears throat> well, you know, actually, yeah. the problem with that is like you're actually limiting yourself as a person too to grow in life, yeah, right? Exactly. I mean, because if my product is good, I'm not going to sell it online for that price. And the thing is like, there is yeah. the psychological factor about it as well, right? Like, uh, everyone is like after good stuff. If I do the good stuff, but I don't sell it online for $1, everyone is coming to me and I can sell it for $1,000, mm -hmm. right? Exactly, yeah. I mean, so, if, if, if as, as a community, everyone decides to put their prices up to sensible, you know, sensible levels, then everyone would stand to make a lot more. And people are happy to pay it. I mean, because with Scan Store, you know, we know what people are willing to pay, and they're definitely willing to pay more than the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and you figured it out, really. I'm sure you had a price at some points, and then you've arranged it to a point that, yeah, yeah most people are buying here. And exactly, yeah, that's it. We know our door of values, mm -hmm. and it's and we're quite happy to share those as well. And that's that's the thing mm -hmm. with with Badger. We've got so much. You know, we've got hundreds of thousands of sales, and we've got so much knowledge of like uh, where the average price points are and what the average person's willing to spend. Mm. Um, and it is way, way, way above what the, I would say the average price is for products on some of the marketplaces. Mm. Um, have you, have you talked to, before we go, uh, have you talked to, uh, I think 10, it's 10, 20, not 20, 24, um, LTR limited. He's also in the UK. I think um, LTR. Uh, what's his name? He, he he was the first guy doing scans in the UK. Infinite Realities. Oh, Lee. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lee, yeah, Lee. I've been spoken to him Lee? for years. Yeah, he's. Um, I used, I used to talk to him back in the day when he just yeah. started. Uh, yeah, it was. Cool. I remember Lee posting your because I remember seeing your work about ten years ago when you were doing mm. the the helmets and stuff, and it was amazing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I think Lee was like quite a, a big advocate of your of your stuff back in the day. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, he's. Um, I, I thought maybe you guys, because you're both from the UK, right? I thought. Yeah, maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. But maybe yeah, no. we chatted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we used to chat quite a bit. We don't really chat that much anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. So I guess we should finish it for now, right? It's James. Yeah, is late. I, I've Mark, got to go. Sorry. Mike is early. Yeah. I'm also like yeah, tired already. Like, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. finish it for today. And uh, James, people are yeah. asking about how they can contribute, like put it on your website to batch you and sit and stuff like that. I mean, if you can provide uh, but, a specific information, we can put it in in the link. I could put it yeah, in the comment section. Yeah, it's just section. a budget.com. It's just a pretty standard. It's not standard. It's pretty cool. Pretty, <laughs> uh, it's like more than a standard. Marketplace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a beast. But um, yeah, it's, you need to go on. Uh, you click open the store, and then you can apply for an account. Uh, all the accounts are vetted, so it's a, um, it's a curated marketplace. So we you know, sort of look at things. We, we won't let people... Mm -hmm. put stuff on there that isn't in keeping with the sort of the quality that we're looking for which is relatively high um but yeah that, that's it really so yeah if you just go on and open a store and apply for a vendor account and also we're like um if your account doesn't get approved um we're offering feedback as well so you know if, if you want to figure out what it is that you could do or that you could sell then you know we're more than happy to have a chat with you yeah um about that as well so yeah that's it. So I apologize. Guess... I'm, I'm really tired. It's like no, I am tired too. Last so... eleven. I've had about four hours sleep. So yeah, me too. I, I didn't have bit. enough sleep. Mike is the same. He woke <laughs> up early. I woke up like I had a mm. class at. I had to teach from nine to yeah. right, right before this podcast, and then <laughs> it is. So it's time to rest a bit. I didn't have a weekend for like months now. <laughs> cool. I think my. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's cool. finish it. Okay. Cool, yep. James. Well, Thank you lovely, so much. Sweet to you both again. That yes, was uh, great. You, James. Yep, you too, Mike. I'll, I'll uh, yeah. chat to you on the hybrid. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, See you, guys. Guys. See See you later. See Cheers. See you. Bye. Bye, bye. Should we finish it as well, Mike, or you want to continue? I don't know. I don't know. What's I am there tired as well. I guess you want to. Yeah. Twenty-four yeah, people I gotta watching. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I gotta start uh, my day. <laughs> You gotta okay. start your day. <laughs> oh, okay. Which is weird, but uh, yeah. Um, should we I mean, do this more maybe... often, like weekly? Yeah, I, obviously I we do yours so, on your I channel think... on Tuesday. On Tuesday, so tomorrow. I think so. I think in in terms of uh, 
doing stuff and having a presence um, with with people will will be good because we're they're we seeing us now, like right? Advoc- I didn't stop the live. That. I didn't stop the live okay. yet. So yeah, we want to like have a presence and be out there. And I think when you hide away and you just kind of really yeah. just get focused on things. Like if we can do it in the sense that we're just like, hey, let's um let's do an hour and a half here and pop online for a bit and have yeah, a chat that's. And I think we, we will do it weekly, stuff. like as like Sundays. I want to keep this schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, we can do it Tuesday my, my time will be better like let's do it on Tuesday my evening which is your Wednesday is oh, that so good for the, for the podcast for yeah the yeah for your week I, I think it's good for you as well because that's where the traffic comes in like more people can watch sure. and, so let's do it on your yeah. Wednesday my Tuesday so for those who are watching guys share these because we want to grow this community. We want to do like really good stuff for everyone, uh, provide information, help artists uh, around the world, like those who don't have access to it. I spoke to, uh, to Mike about this a lot, and we are here to help as much as we can, you know. So mm. we need your support as well. Um, go subscribe to Mike's channel. Subscribe to my channel. Um, if we get enough support, we'll grow this to a big, big thing. And I have mm. I have talks with Mike. We are we are thinking about doing something big, something really different for this market. Mm. Yeah, so I'd love to do that, and something uh, that gives back a lot more than just "Hey, let me make some work and look how cool this is." I think uh, yeah, everyone can sit and do that in to endless degree, and uh, it, ultimately, it's just it's a it's a there's a form of like, hey, you know, just I'm sitting at home working away and doing this. I think as as we, we come online and things should open up more and more so that we go to see that yeah and the thing is mm-hmm. like um what do you call it like uh, let me actually go to this page because it's um the thing is um right now many don't know that we are still doing this so the only way to do it is like mm-hmm. to grow and uh, basically help and others help us like it's a it's a both way you know yeah, yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. We will try our best. You guys support us. We'll support you, and then we'll build something good together. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Did. What else? No. I think uh, I think that's it. We could leave it there, and um... that's it. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, yeah. Bye, and uh, hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. See you. All right. See you guys. Thank you.